tonight, how to fix Twitter, stop oversharing on Facebook, and celebrate Star Wars Day. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 330 for Monday, May 4th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome to the show. Happy Star Wars Day and May the 4th be with you. Get it? If you haven't been on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere online today, you might not already know that today is Star Wars Day, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. I do not have a lisp. Joining us today from an undisclosed location, we have Kurt Wagner, reporter at Recode. Welcome, Kurt. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I know our wires have crossed and we had a big Windows event on Friday and then you had to go somewhere. So I'm glad we could finally get you. You had some great content that I wanted to talk to you about that you wrote last week. And now you're on, getting ready to go on a plane. So we just have your voice, which is great. We'll take it. You do. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm hanging at the airport. So thanks for uh, making the accommodation. <laughs> Thank you. So Twitter had some pretty lousy earnings reports last week. They lowered revenue productions for the year. They hinted at more user growth issues. But you say there's a silver lining. What is it? Well, Twitter acquired a company by the name of Telepart. And it, they announced it at the same day of the earnings. But of course, you mentioned a couple of the issues that we all noticed, and that kind of uh, overshadowed the news. But what that means is uh, Teleport's an ad tech uh, startup that lets advertisers understand how their ads are performing across different devices. So, for example, if I'm an advertiser and I advertise on Twitter, you maybe see uh, the tweet in your Twitter stream, and you say, okay, I'm going to make a purchase, but I'm going to do it on my laptop. Well, it's right now it's really hard to identify that the ad you saw on your phone on Twitter is the same ad that made you go to your laptop and make a purchase. Uh, and this company, Telepart, their technology is intended to do just that. So for Twitter, the hope is that it's going to make their ads a lot stronger for marketers, uh, and therefore people are going to want to spend more money on the service. So do you happen to know how they follow us that way? Telepart, I mean? So. So that's what's so tricky is that uh, with cell phones right now, there's no cookies, right? So internet cookies are the way that basically they're able to um, follow people around the web uh, when you're on a laptop. But because mobile devices don't have cookies, that's why there's been this disconnect between being able to track people from a mobile device to, say, a laptop or a tablet. But what happens is that with Twitter, you may be logged into Twitter on all these different devices. Um, so what they're able to do is, kind of leverage the fact that they know who you are on Twitter across these devices to also then determine, okay, you know, there's a good chance Kurt saw this ad on his mobile device and now he's making a purchase. We're going to go ahead and attribute, um, you know, that purchase to this particular ad. So Twitter's kind of the, uh, the glue that crosses these mobile devices. And then, um, you know, the technology, of course, does all the, all the, the hard work to try and identify where everyone comes from. So is this the same thing that Google's been able to do? I mean, I log in on Gmail on my phone and on my laptop, and um, have they been able to do that for a while? Yeah, so Google can do this with DoubleClick. Um, Facebook can also do this with a technology called Atlas, which they kind of revamped last summer. So it's not totally brand new. I think the, the big thing for Twitter is going to be that one of the reasons they said their earnings were bad was because they said that uh, the click-through rates on what they called direct response ads were lower than they thought. So a direct response ad is an ad that, that drives a specific result, for example, a website visit or uh, you know an app install. And so when they got fewer of those clicks than they expected, they're hopeful that this technology is going to uh, uh, you know do, I guess, a better job of helping people actually follow through and install the ad, or, or excuse me, install the app, or, or actually visit the website. So I think that it's, um, you know, it's a way to show marketers that their ads are actually working on Twitter, and if they think that ads are working, then they're going to keep spending money. Right. I mean, Twitter is a little different. I mean, their ads come right native in the content. I mean, you can't, with Gmail, you know, they're kind of off to the side. I can look at them or not, but... I mean, with Twitter, you're, you know, you're just scrolling through and it's hard not to see the ad. And they do really, you know, just sometimes seem just like tweets, right? 
Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of what they call native ads, right, is that it feels like it fits into the stream. And so I think that's what Facebook's doing. That's what uh, you know Twitter is doing. There's a lot of people who are really taking note of the fact that people don't want an ad to jump out at them and look like a sore thumb. They want it to feel very natural uh, with all the other content that they're seeing. And that's what, uh, that's what Twitter and, and Facebook in particular are really trying hard to do. All right. So now uh, we're talking about Twitter and Facebook and Google, but your article talks a little bit about a partnership sort of between Twitter and Google. Uh, what's going on there? Is it a partnership? Yeah, so I think that um, there's a there's a second part to this news, and that is that Twitter and Google are partnering uh, with DoubleClick. So what that means is that an advertiser who uses DoubleClick, which is a lot of the biggest brands out there in the world, they're they're using uh, Google's DoubleClick to manage all of their ad campaigns. Now they can easily buy ads on Twitter through DoubleClick, and then at the same time they can take information about those ads. For example, are people favoriting it? Are people retweeting it? And they can, uh, you know, kind of bring that back and, and layer that into all the other information that Google's already provided them about their ad campaign. So they can see, is this Twitter ad actually helping? And so um, it's a big deal because, number one, it makes it a lot easier for big brands to, to continue to advertise on Twitter. Um, but number two, it's a big deal for Google because it helps uh, their advertisers get a lot more mobile information. And we were just talking about why that can be kind of tricky because there's not these internet cookies. So I think that, you know, it's a it's a good um, partnership between those two. And, and as we point out in the article, I think Facebook is kind of, shipping, you know, leading the way in terms of uh, acquiring all this ad tech and really providing advertisers with all the tools they might need. And I think this is this is kind of Google and Twitter uh, linking arms a little bit uh, to try and compete with Facebook on that level. Right, like a little bit of you can't beat them, join them kind of thing between Twitter and Google. For sure, and you know they they've had a, another relationship in the past with with search, or I should say, they've announced another relationship last quarter where uh, tweets are going to appear in Google searches. So it's not the first time that the two companies have kind of uh, par uh, partnered up on things like this. So um, perhaps this is something that's going to continue to happen down the road. Yeah, it was interesting last week on Friday. I think we saw that Google Plus opened their first Twitter account. So it was Google Plus tweeting, which was interesting because Google Plus was supposed to, you know, be, some people say it's better than Twitter, you know, it was supposed to compete with Twitter, right? But now they're tweeting. <laughs> I know, I saw that. It only took, what, about eight years or so. Um, I, I, I did find it a little bit funny only because, uh, you know, there, there really, in my opinion, shouldn't be any reason for Facebook not to have a Twitter or Twitter to have a Facebook or Google Plus to have either, you know, one or the other. It, it, the, the point is kind of to reach people wherever they are. And I think that, um, you know, that requires companies like this to understand that, that their platforms are not the only ones out there. So, uh, but yes, it was telling, I guess, that, that Google Plus finally got a, a Twitter account. Maybe there's a, a lot more to this relationship than, than just the partnership. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. So speaking of Facebook, you have another article last week that was showing people how to stop oversharing on Facebook. And you're not talking about bathroom selfies or status updates that, you know, share too much information. You're talking about what happens when we log in to our other apps or websites with our Facebook accounts. So what happened last week that changed? So this was uh, not news for last week. It was actually news that was announced a year ago at Facebook's F8 developer conference. But what they did was when they announced the news, they said, hey, there's an, a, a, you know one year until this, this change is implemented. And that change is that when you use Facebook blog and then you open a, you know, download a new app and instead of creating an account by doing an email password combo, you simply hit this, the login with Facebook button that makes it really convenient. In the past, these apps would ask for all different types of information from you. So maybe, you know, your, your Facebook profile, your friends list, your birthday. And there was really no way to give them some of that information without just simply giving it to them as a, as a lump, as a bulk, uh, if you will. And what Facebook did was a year ago, they said, no, we're going to change that. So now users can decide what information do I actually want to give and what do I want to opt out of. And that year is now up, so, so those changes are in effect. So now if you download a new app, you hit log in with Facebook, there's a button there where you can edit what types of information you actually share with that third-party developer. And I think there's going to be a lot of people who, who find this helpful so that they don't have to share, you know, six or seven different parts of their profile with, with some third-party developer. They might just have to share, uh, you know, 
like their name and their birthday or whatever. It's just the basics. Right. So you first agree to it, and then once you're in Facebook, then you have to go in the settings. They don't really make it that easy for you to figure out how to do it. Well, it's pretty it's pretty easy when you're logging in, right? So you hit log in with Facebook, and it'll bring you to a, a Facebook controlled page that'll say, "Hey, you're about to give you know this third party app." Uh, X, Y, and Z, and there's a button right there that says edit what you share, and you can click that button and edit. Now, if you've already shared this information, so for example, if you, uh, you know, use your Facebook account to log in with Candy Crush like two years ago, you probably shared a lot more than you really realized. And in order to kind of get that back is quite a process. You have to go into Facebook settings, um, kind of sever ties between Facebook and, and in this case, Candy Crush, and then that only eliminates Candy Crush from gathering information from you moving forward. So they still have everything you've shared over the last two years. There's nothing, you know, they've already collected that. There's nothing you can do about it unless you go to Candy Crush specifically and ask them to delete it. And there's no real easy way to do that. You know, each, each company is going to have their own method of, of doing that. So, you know, once your Facebook information is in the hands of, of a third party developer, it's really, really hard to get it back. Yeah. So do you recommend that people use Facebook login or just log in with their email address? You know, when I first started uh, downloading a lot of apps, I, I really tried to create a, a new account for each one because I was thinking, all right, you know, I'm willing to share my email. I'm willing to, to create a password, but I didn't want them to have all this information. And then as I started downloading more and more apps, it just became a real hassle to try and remember all these email password combos. So I have kind of uh, diverted or, or reverted, I guess, to just simply using Facebook login because it is so simple. It's just really a couple clicks. And at this point, I've kind of got the mindset that everything I have on, on Facebook is probably known uh, to people anyway, especially given my profession where we, we tend to, to share probably more than we, we need to. So um, I'm a Facebook login kind of person, but I certainly understand why people might be hesitant. Yeah. It's interesting how you eventually just get worn down and you're like, oh, fine. Somebody probably already shared all the people on my friends list anyway. I'll just go ahead. And yeah, right. So what exactly. information? I don't know if that's the, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I don't know if that's the best policy, but it definitely happens. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, what information are are we giving out when we agree to, you know, share our friends? When we, does that mean the developer has access to all of their information that we have access to? So there used to be um, a way for some developers to do that where if you would literally be sharing some of your friends' information when you agreed to this. And, and that sounds kind of shady, and I think that um, hopefully that's kind of the conclusion that Facebook came to because a year ago when they uh, announced these changes to what you know you could share with third-party developers, they also said that a year from now or what ended up being last week, um, they were going to eliminate this ability for developers to also get your friends' information. So that was something that actually used to happen with certain in certain cases where if you sign up for an app with your Facebook login, uh, that developer might get some information on your friends, but that's no longer. Okay. And so you had another piece about Facebook today. Uh, Meerkat, the live streaming app that we've talked about before, um, allows you now to post to Facebook. Was that the news? That's correct. That's correct, although it's um, it's not everybody. It's it's just people that have pages. So that would typically be brands, celebrities, um, people who, uh, I guess, are, are well-known enough or big enough that they merit their own, you know, fan page or, or brand page. Um, why I think this is significant is that it's really the first time that Facebook's been involved in this Periscope Meerkat, uh, you know, live stream battle that we've been watching. And it's really not so much Facebook getting involved as it is Meerkat kind of dragging them into into this whole thing by using their API to do that. But um, I do think, you know, it's important for Meerkat, especially because uh, Twitter has, has kind of shown in the past that they're not going to be super friendly um, to the app considering they have their own version. So maybe Facebook is going to be its ally in, in trying to kind of, you know, take on this Twitter Periscope duo. Right. Well, Kurt, thank you so much. I know you have a flight to catch. I really appreciate it. Kurt Wagner is a reporter at Recode. Is there anything else you're working on that you can tell us about? Besides that small uh, child that's nearby? <laughs> yeah, yes. No, please ignore the uh, the background. Like, no, yeah, I'm, I'm headed to uh, Las Vegas for the Collision Conference, and I'll be moderating a few panels. So looking forward to that. You know, you can never have a bad time in, in Las Vegas. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, I hope the, what you report on in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas, but we can find it at Kurt Wagner 8 <laughs> on Twitter and at Recode. Yes, that sounds good. Thanks again for having me. Take care.
This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to develop an app, learn WordPress, boost your productivity, or sharpen your business skills. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. If you're looking to expand your creative skills, lynda.com's new courses include exploring composition and photography, creating commercial illustrations, and making your site retina ready. There's also a new workshop on Photoshop CC adjustment layer and blend mode. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand. They have transcripts, which you can follow along to, or you can search for an answer and skip right to that point in the video. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. And we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. In honor of Star Wars Day, we decided to focus on a few Star Wars stories in the headlines. This weekend, Vanity Fair revealed its upcoming cover layout with the major cast members posing inside the Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Plus, J.J. Abrams reveals that he thought about killing off Jar Jar Binks. Thank you. His idea was to plant the bones of Jar Jar Binks in the desert. He did not reveal, I don't think, if he's actually going to do that. He acknowledges that only three people would notice it, but they would love it. The digital version of the Vanity Fair issue will be available on May 7th for download. The print edition comes out on May 12th. In other Star Wars news, astronauts stationed aboard the International Space Station sat back and relaxed to a screening of one of the Star Wars films today. A NASA tweet read, Just watching Star Wars! In space, no big deal, adding the hashtag, may the fourth be with you. It should be noted that NASA received quite a bit of criticism via Twitter due to their choice of Star Wars movie. The picture they revealed showed that they had selected episode three, Revenge of the Sith, which one commenter reported, that's the worst one. Even NASA can't win. And finally, I am a sucker for monkeys puppies, unicorns, and anything 3D printed, including teeth shaped like beer openers. I cannot personally confirm if this is real or not, but it is a beer campaign. At the Salta Beer has designed tooth implants for Argentina's sea rugby players who have lost their teeth in games. The 3D printed teeth are special implants since they also function as bottle openers and they're kind of gross. And sort of funny. Uh, there's the video right now. If you don't have one of these implants, do not do that. Don't use your teeth for that. Or you will have to get a 3D printed tooth. That's enough of that beer ad, I think. <laughs> that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I asked you, our viewers, to tag or send in your selfies watching or listening to Tech News Tonight. We recently received some more images, so I thought I would share this one with you. Today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Peter from Black Canyon City, Arizona, who sent us this selfie watching or hopefully just listening and maybe watching when he stopped listening to Tech News Tonight at work while he's driving his truck. Thank you, Peter, and good luck with your efforts at trying to convince your wife that you need an Apple Watch. So send us your selfies, tag your pictures. With Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.